the first hadith is the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said one who control his anger in spite of having strength to enforce it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fill his heart with iman and peace this means that a person has full strength to enforce his anger and there is no obstacle preventing him from doing so yet he control his anger and forgives the person only out of the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then bless such a person with the above reward what a great reward for controlling one's anger the elders have explained that one who consumes the bitter sip of anger which means that he controls it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change all that anger into noor into the light of iman together with this anger which takes place for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or for the affairs of deen is an ex- uh, exceptional type of anger as rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he also got angry when witnessing the disobedience towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his blessed face would turn red as if if, if pomegranate juice had been sprinkled on it so therefore one should get angry on the disobedience of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second hadith is one who controlled his anger though he was able to enforce it on the day of qiyamah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call him in front of all the creation and allow him to choose any who he pleases to, uh, to have this is the the second reward of controlling uh, one singer the third hadith is the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said on the day of qiyama allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call out stand up whoever has arrived upon me no one will stand up except the person who forgave another's mistake in the world so whoever who earned this wealth and did action of forgiveness only he will stand up to take these rewards from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day the fourth hadith is anyone who wants high palaces and high stages in jannah should forgive the one keeping him down he should give to the to the one who who deprives him and he should keep up relation and communication with the one who who breaks ties some uh, you can say the blood relatives are such that even if one does a million kindness to them they do not do uh, so in the return the rule for them is that even if they keep breaking ties one should keep maintaining ties with them and forgive them we learn from this hadith of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised beautiful mansions and high stages for the person who who practices this if if, if a relative is troubling and harming one to such an extent that it is unbearable and and through which one's uh, world and hereafter is being harmed so one should take advice from the ulama ikram because for such a person uh, some different rules uh, uh, will apply the fifth hadith is narrated by a sahabi hazrat abu mas'ud radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu that once he was beating his slave when he heard a voice from behind him saying o abu mas'ud allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has more power over you than what you have over him this was the voice of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam